The iPhone is easily our most personal device. Through customization and installing the right apps, we can make it into a small tool in our pockets that is useful many times during the day. Today, I want to share my iPhone 13 mini setup with you with the goal of creating a distraction-free little tool instead of another entertainment machine. So let's go. Since we talk a lot about tech on this channel, let's just quickly go over the model I'm using right now. I'm still using the iPhone 13 mini that I have bought in, I think, February of this year. Initially, I was afraid to go down to the smaller size because I thought I would maybe miss the bigger phone. But I have to say, I love this form factor so much and I love doing things with just one hand so much easier and I don't want to trade up to a bigger phone yet. Also, I think the iPhone 14 series is not really that exciting. There are some new features on the 14 Pro models, but it's nothing that really would blow you away. So I'm sticking with the smaller phone for now. Okay, so let's jump right into my setup. First up, let's start on the lock screen. Right now, I am only using one of the lock screen widgets, which is the weather one, because I like the kind of overlapping thing here with the clock and you're missing out on that if you put like a bunch of widgets down here. And also, I think it's just not really that great to have widgets right there. I think it's a bit cluttered and I'm super happy with the way I have it right now. Okay, let's move on to my home screen. So on here, as you can see, I have the weather widget because I really like to see the forecast and like the weather for the next couple of days at a glance and my calendar to see what's kind of up for the day or the next couple of days. So I use those two really big widgets right there to see everything at a glance. And then I have my fitness pal right here. I use it for tracking calories. I gotta say, I don't think it's the best app, but unfortunately I haven't really found a better alternative yet. So I'm sticking with it for now. Next up, I'm still using the stock Apple podcasts app. I like some of the alternatives and some of them do really great things, but for me this has just worked really reliably. One gripe I have with it is that the syncing of the timestamp, like where you were in one episode, doesn't really work with Max. So yeah, that's kind of a gripe I have with it, but in general I like the UI more and it's not really that bad for me to warrant upgrading to another one. Next up, the same kind of goes for the Apple Mail app. and. They added some great features with iOS 16. For example, you can now undo send for I think uh, about 15 seconds after you sent an email, just stuff like that. They improved the search. And so I've been an Apple Mail user for a long time and I'm super happy with it. It does everything I needed to do. But honestly, I don't really have like great demands for an email app. Also, I've disabled the notification badge on top because I don't think I have to know how many unread emails I have all the time. And so whenever I want to check my emails, I go in there and then I can see it, but I don't need like the red badge. Next up, I have photos. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Next up, I also use Apple Maps. I think it's gotten way better over the past couple of years and I think it's now pretty close to Google Maps. Google Maps, in my experience, is still, at least in Europe, better at estimating when you will get where, but sometimes Apple Maps has kind of a more clever route. And in general, again, I like the UI more. It looks way better. I don't like the green UI of Google Maps, and for me, it's good enough most of the time, and so I use it most of the time. Audible should also be pretty self-explanatory. I really like listening to books in the audiobook form. If it's a very good one, I will listen to it multiple times just to kind of always remember the points made in there. And so, yeah, it's just a very convenient way to read books for me. <laughs> Next up, WhatsApp. It's just, you have to use it basically in Europe. I think I would be cut off from most of the university communication stuff if I wouldn't use WhatsApp. I would prefer not to use WhatsApp, but yeah, because of network effects, it's just super hard to kind of get everyone over to a different app. So yeah, you just have to have WhatsApp. And this is just the kind of local transport app we use. In the dock, I have just the phone, messages, music, and Safari, which I think are my most used apps. And then I have a second page with Things 3. I still use Things because I think it just looks better than Apple Reminders. Honestly, I think I would be okay with using Reminders, but for now, since I have bought it already anyway, I'm still sticking with Things. And then I have the iRobot app for controlling my Roomba. Notion, also a Notion widget for capturing ideas for this channel. So sometimes I will be out and about and just think of a great video idea, at least I think in the moment. And I will just put it in there so I can think about it later and just specify it more. Then I have my banking app, Headspace. I really like Headspace because first up it has like a great education offer so you can get it for really cheap if you're a student. And 
Secondly, it just helps to meditate for me because it has like streaks and it shows you how many minutes you've meditated already. And in these past couple of weeks, especially, I've really tried to meditate more often and take at least like five minutes every day. And it really helped me a lot. Then on the bottom here, I also have the Apple fitness widget just to see kind of where I'm at with my fitness goals. Today, it doesn't really <laughs> look so good yet, but um, yeah, that's just to kind of see where I'm at throughout the day. I use Blinkist to kind of get short summaries of books when I just want to kind of revise one book I've read already. I have the Kindle app. Honestly, I don't use it a lot on my phone, but sometimes I just want to like, continue and I can't bring my Kindle and so I just continue in the app here. And those two apps are just for controlling the car and for charging the car. All right, so that's basically my whole iPhone setup already because I don't really use social media on my phone. I want my phone to be more of a tool and just to use it whenever I need to get something done and not to kind of get distracted by my phone. If you want to read more about that, I would really recommend you to read Cal Newport's book, Digital Minimalism. It's really interesting and it goes over a lot of the reasoning why you might think that it's a good idea to kind of quit social media or at least limit it. For me, I've just realized that having YouTube and stuff like Instagram or Snapchat on my phone will just make me waste more time. And if I want to watch YouTube, I will do it intentionally on my laptop or on an iPad, not on my phone. And so that kind of makes me reach for my phone less often when I feel bored. And I think that's something that probably most of us are kind of aspiring to. In general, when it comes to customizing your own iPhone, and if you want to kind of take some inspiration from this for your own setup, I would say just keep it simple. Start with like a very clean slate. There was, for example, a great uh, Peter McKinnon video recently where he talked about like removing everything. You can start with that and then I would just slowly add stuff back in as you realize what you need and what you actually use on a daily basis. And also be very mindful about what you don't need and what you don't need to have right there all the time. All right, so that's been it for today for me. I hope you found this video useful. If so, as always, leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.